Good morning, Bimbleus. And it's a very special morning, Bimble, because it's a Monday morning, which is an odd day for me to come out bimbling. But the wind was atrocious, wasn't it, over the weekend? It didn't put me off going out on my bike. But I can't do any filming because the noise on the microphone would be atrocious. So we're out today. And we're here at Latchford Locks. And we're going to head off in that direction. To a few little special places. So let's bimble. Behind me is Walton Hall and it was the home of Sir Gilbert Greenall and Sir Gilbert Greenall was the Member of Parliament for Warrington between 1836 and 1838 and he was the Sheriff of Cheshire and the Justice of the Peace for Cheshire and Lancashire but I reckon you filthy lot know him because his name's on the side of a lot of pubs in the North West his dad Edward Greenall started a brewery and Gilbert Greenall and all his brothers inherited that brewery 
and it became known as Greenhall and Whitley's. We spoke about it before in one of our Mersey Cuts videos, where we talk about Greenhall's brewery making Vladivar Vodka. It's made in Warrington. They also made Bombay Sapphire Gin, which you've probably got a bottle of at home. On top of inheriting a brewery and becoming a politician, Sir Gilbert Greenhall also made quite a lot of shrewd investments around the North West. He invested in property and banks and became a bit of a gazillionaire, hence his rather fabulous home. But as was the custom at the time, he did put a little bit back into the community. He was like the brewing equivalent of an Elon Musk. He had an extension built onto Walton Hall and the architects he chose to do that were called Paley and Austin. We spoke about them in the last bimble. They were famous for making churches and he commissioned them to extend Walton Hall to give him a little bit extra room. And he was so pleased with what they did, he commissioned them to build a church in Walton. And that was St John's Church. And apparently he had it built so his daughter could get married in it. And he was so pleased with that church that he got them to tart up another church just down the road, which we'll bimble to in a minute. They had such a close relationship that Paley and Austin actually had offices here at Walton Hall. In 1894, Sir Gilbert Greenhall dies. And Walton Hall was inherited by his son, Sir Gilbert Greenhall. But by 1940, I think it was a little bit too much for everyone to deal with. A giant hall and gardens. So he donated the hall to Warrington Borough Council. And the whole place was made into a park for us all to enjoy. It's rather a nice park. There's a great playground over there for your kids. A petting zoo. And just for us bimblers. On Saturdays and Sundays. They've got a bicycle museum. Keep your seats. It's not open today because it's a Monday. No, I won't be donating British Eagle. It's very cheeky for you to say that. This is All Saints Church in Darsbury. And this is the church that Sir Gilbert Greenall hired Paley and Austin to tart up the tower of. But that's not its claim to fame. Its claim to fame is actually the vicarage. The vicarage is the birthplace of Lewis Carroll. You know, the guy that wrote Alice in Wonderland. Lewis Carroll is actually his pen name. His real name was Charles Lutwidge Dodson. And his father, Charles Dodgson, was the vicar at this church. In fact, he was something called the Perpetual Curate, 
which meant that he could have been the vicar of this church until he died. But that wasn't the case, more on that in a minute. Charles Dodgson Sr. was a professor of mathematics at Christ Church, Oxford. But when he got married, he couldn't do that position anymore. I think because they all used to live on campus. I don't think you were allowed to have your wife live in there. And it was the woman that Charles Dodgson Sr. married that gave Charles Lutwidge Dodgson his double barrel surname. Fanny Lutwidge, or Francis Jane Lutwidge. And Charles and Fanny were first cousins. And Fanny and Charles had 11 children. 11 banjo playing, I mean 11 beautiful children. And the position here wasn't very well paid. So Charles actually opened a school in Darsbury to supplement his income and keep his 11 inbred children in food. Charles was very concerned with the education of the children in Darsbury and he was also very concerned with the workers of the Bridgewater Canal which meanders its way through here somewhere. He was concerned that none of them were going to church on Sundays so he actually set up a floating church on a barge and after he did the service here on a Sunday he would get on the barge at Walton and sail up to Preston Brook which is halfway between here and Runcorn and he would give the sermon on the canal barge which sounds like my kind of sermon in 1843 the family moved away from Darsbury and moved to Yorkshire Charles Senior was given the living of Croft and in 1854 he was made the canon of Ripon but Charles Junior, Lewis Carroll remained really good friends with Sir Gilbert Greenall in fact, there's a picture from 1859 of Lewis Carroll stood outside of Walton Hall. But I don't think Lewis Carroll could have imagined what we're bimbling to next. And I think his father would have been rather impressed with it. Not to mention Paley and Austin. Let's bimble. I'll never let it go, you find in time. I'll never let it go, you find it's right. I'll only ever know how to speak my mind. This is Darsby Labs, and behind me is Darsby Tower. Darsby Labs started being built in 1962, and it was all completed in 1967. And apparently Prime Minister Harold Wilson opened it. The Darsby Tower wasn't opened until 1976, and what it houses is a 45 metre tall by 8 metre across pressure vessel, which apparently has a type of Van de Graaff generator inside. And that's all housed within a 70 metre tall tower with a 71 metre tall service tower to get up to the top and it's surrounded by one metre thick concrete that's 70 centimetres of grey concrete and 30 centimetres of this rather spiffy white concrete making it look very space age it does rather dominate the skyline of Cheshire and you can see it all the way from Liverpool but the scientists said that you would hardly notice it and told all the people of Darsby that you wouldn't be able to see it, which is laughable. But now the people of Darsby love it. And I think if they try to get rid of it now, they'd probably petition to keep it. Darsby Labs are quite well known for making particle accelerators. This one's the biggest one. But they also have one called Alice, which I think is a nod to Lewis Carroll's dad's church up the way. But it stands for accelerators and lasers in combined experiments and it's all particle accelerators and lasers round here it's very science fiction well no it's very science fact it's not just nuclear physics that they do round here they do chemistry biomedicine and computer sciences in fact Darsby Labs is home to the HPCX supercomputer before it was superseded by Hector the supercomputer in Edinburgh and apparently IBM and the government are investing £210 million into Darsby Labs 
to take on 60 new scientists and investigate artificial intelligence. So there may be some robots walking around Darsby soon. <laughs>